Uh, I'm sorry, is this Johanan? Uh, yes. Uh, have you heard of a, a physicist named Anton Zeilinger? No. The, uh, the name sounds kind of familiar, but He's obviously... He's the uh, no. inventor of quantum teleportation. Uh, Wolf Price, he comes from the uh, University of Vienna. He invented quantum teleportation? Well, I didn't invent the theory behind it. He, it, it. The theory was produced first, and then he produced it in an experiment. But uh, what I was going to talk about, though, was a different experiment he did back in 2007. Are you familiar with his uh, test of legacy inequalities? Nope. Basically, they disproved realism in quantum mechanics. Uh, there was local what? realism, which was falsified by alien aspect back in the 80s, and then later on he falsified non-local realism, and the result, you can actually look this up on Physics World, uh, April 2007 is an article, is Quantum Physics Says Goodbye to Reality, and the argument was that basically think, the, the, the conclusion was mm -hmm. that things don't actually exist in the quantum realm before you make a measurement of them. Now, what's interesting about this is that this ties into what's called the digital physics paradigm. You've heard of that before? No, but I'll dispute your claim that it's interesting. <laughs> All right. So you can tell uh, Mark Lowy, I know you're your physics guy, just in case you bring him up. He said, yeah, him to check this stuff out. Uh, anyway, there's a, a paradigm in physics right now called digital physics, which says that the world is information at bottom. It comes in from quantum gravity and other areas, and it also argues that uh, space is illusory as well. This is coming from loop quantum gravity, and you can actually derive the same result from non theoretical, just from like experimental results. Yeah, I'm wondering you can, if you called the right show. Okay, what I'm getting at is that you can model the world, and there's a guy named Brian Whitworth who does this. You can model the world like a virtual reality based on information processing. Sure. This, this is all, and it sounds crazy, right? But this is all serious. Uh, NASA physicist named Tom Campbell is also promoting this. And uh, what I was going to get into next, though, was um, integrated information theory. This is Julio Tononi. What has this got to do with the atheist experience, though? I'll explain. I'll explain. Maybe. Okay, it switch gears to, basically I'm going to argue that the universe is on the inside of a, a conscious state. And what? that the only way around this is either to... Excuse me, can, can we skip to something? Uh, is any, are any of these claims that you're about to make directly stated by any of the primary research papers that you're referring to? Or is this uh, just a, a conclusion with, that you've jumped to? Uh, the one with Zeilinger's claim, that is directly... That was that's in his paper. He that says a quote? That realism is false. And then yeah, no, 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 no. The, the conscious mind conclusion that you're skipping to. Did he okay. say that? Uh, actually, Giulio Tononi, I believe, argues for panpsychism. <laughs> However, and it's a really simple argument when you explain, explain the details of it. Basically, no one can really agree on how we get from brain to mind, but the one thing that Pretty much everyone. Whoa, 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 whoa. You know, I, 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 let, me, let me explain real quickly. I'll get, let you get right back to it. Um, right. For the people who have this knee jerk reaction to, oh, no, 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 it's rude to interrupt. Um, no, it's going to actually happen. And that's because if I let somebody start an argument and then continue on down the line when there's a disagreement or unclear terms at the beginning, um, then by the time we get to the end and I go back, then it becomes an argument about whether or not they said what they said. Um, your take that there's not agreement on how to get from brain to mind presumes that the two are different. Okay, that's that. You know, that that's fine. What I'm what I'm getting at though is that you can disagree with that, which is perfectly fine. Tononi's approach, though, because even even among uh, materialists, there's some disagreements on exactly how it happens. But he was saying, let's forget for just a second our disagreement on that, but let's agree on the one thing that everyone can agree on, which is what it's like to have conscious experience. And he pointed out that, well, if you think about your own mind state for a second, everything in it is, well, either an idea or a, it's empirical information coming into the senses. Yeah, I'm not and sure, so I'm not sure that talking about what it's like is fair, and I don't know that you can go from what it's like to what it is. Well, he, okay, what, what I'm getting at is, there's consciousness in itself, the, the experience of it. Well, the phenomenon we call consciousness is basically just information, ideas in our head, right? I mean, if, if our brains were computing away, if you're Chalmers' P-zombie argument, right? I, I don't even know what you just said. Okay, so 
let's suppose you have like a brain in a toaster oven ships into a laboratory and you never you never saw a brain before in your life you never heard of a brain before in your life you could analyze both of these objects and you couldn't tell from first principles that one would be conscious and the other one would be just a toaster oven right well neither could you tell the difference between you know a computer hard drive in an off state and and one that's actually running some kind of software but that doesn't mean that physical re processes aren't responsible for it. Well, I'm not, okay, I'm not actually arguing that it's not a natural explanation. I, my personal view is I'm a, a neutral monist. I think it is tied to the brain. I'm not like a dual or anything okay. like that. So Just are you saying that the, that the universe is a brain? Uh, I'm saying it's a mind, an integrated information system. Why? Well, because it behaves identical. It, uh, unless you argue no, for it dualism, doesn't. you have to say that it's the same thing as a conscious state, because otherwise you have to draw a distinction between physical and no, mental No, you don't. I, I mean, this is something that, that people who are amateurs with, con with quantum mechanics do all the time, is just jump to conclusions about minds which uh, are not supported by the actual scientific research that's being done. That, you know, this is, this is Deepak Chopra stuff. Um, uh, this is, I, I, I I also saw some physics people, and Mike, I'm a physics person myself, but it's... Okay, have you published any recent, have you published any papers promoting I'm, I'm, this I, theory with the consciousness of the universe thing? No, but I will point you to Tom Campbell, who's a NASA physicist, who comes to the same conclusion. Okay. All right. Can, can we, you know, I know that we made this a two-hour show, but I don't necessarily <laughs> want this to be the two-hour call. So, um... Since we don't agree, wake up, Matt. On the, <laughs> uh, since we don't agree on the brain mind thing, I don't know what, how much point there is in continuing. Well, what, what I'm getting at is, we may not agree exactly on the details of the brain mind thing, but we can at least agree on what it's subjectively like to have consciousness. Yeah. I'm not even mm -hmm. sure that we can agree on that, but I'm most definitely sure that even if we could agree on what it's like, the experiential process of being conscious, that you went from there to. Uh, a, some sort of broader truth that leads to the universe being a mind because it acts in, in this way when it doesn't uh, in any sense well, other than is, in any sense other right, than right. we Let are bags in any argue, sense in bit. any sense other than we are bags of chemicals interacting and there's this nifty phenomenon that we have then labeled and the rest of the universe is chemicals interacting and there are other phenomena that we are labeled so yeah hey look argument by analogy they're just the same I'm, I'm, let me break it down past the analogy because okay. what Benoni was arguing was that consciousness is identical a conscious state is identical with an inf integrated information system All right. and so when you think about it for a second and this is going to sound kind of crazy at first but let's suppose this is the inception or something and we're in like some shared lucid dream okay very deep, but just play with it as a hypothetical. And you examine, do experiments in there, and you discover that, well, the space is an illusion, just like we see in our reality. You discover that the matter doesn't exist before you measure it, which is also what we see in our reality, just at the, the quantum scale, and you see that all the processes emerge from information processing. Well, For example, let me ask you something. Uh, if this is a scientific theory, then what predictions does it make? I mean, how will you tell the... How would you, uh, suppose that we have the question, is it conscious or is it not conscious? What prediction could you make to demonstrate that it was one and not the other? This is going to be really cool. I'll show you a couple of them, oh, actually. Boy. Okay, so, so we have two models. One is atoms in the void. It's particles moving around the empty space. The other one is we're going to model the world as a virtual reality based on information processing or based on thought processing, if you will. And I, when you do this, don't accept the idea that calling it virtual reality makes it thoughts. Okay. Um, you can, I'll, I'll just give you a little reference on the virtual reality model. This is I'm Brian bored. Whitworth. This, so you can look at this up for later if you want. He actually demonstrated that um, the speed of light, for example, would emerge out as a natural result of the refresh rate of, like, say, a computer or a conscious state process. So your prediction is that the speed of light will be what it is? Yeah, it's not just that, though. He had that's, a list of, like, That's 20... a retroactive prediction. That's okay, not yeah, something yeah, there's, there's that you can more, test though, There's more, at... though. One of them... I mean, that's, know... that's one in science they call just-so stories, where you take stuff it, that's I... already known and you retrofit your idea to fit the fact. Hold on. And, and no, no, more, no, you hold on. There was a no, prediction, no, not a no, hold on. Uh, this is not the right forum 
for this stuff. Um, you can, and I apologize for being rude, uh, but I don't give a rat's ass about hypothetical models and interesting. No, this is hypothetical. Um, you just went. Proven. You just went to let's construct this hypothetical model. So well, I'm giving, let I'm me finish. You the, you're done. Uh, I don't give a rat's ass about. First of all, I don't give a rat's ass about quantum mechanics and quantum theory and postulations and stuff. I want to know about reality. And you talk about uh, speculative, fledgling sciences where I'm not even. I'm not qualified to comment on their validity. And yet, I want to know what this tells us about reality and why it matters. Because ultimately, well, you could sit here. The first thing he said is there is no reality in here. Yes. Well, I mean, you could sit here for the next 45 minutes to an hour until my gla eyes glazed over and rolled out of my head, explaining to me the physics stuff that I don't <laughs> give a damn about. Because it doesn't mean anything to me. And I'm sure that you. Feel, feel free, feel entirely free, and you are entirely fair and justified in, in claiming that these buffoons on the TV show don't understand the physics and completely disregarded what I wanted to say without letting me finish, because that's accurate. And you know why? Because it's stupid! <laughs> it's stupid for me to sit here and waste my time and the time of everybody else who is not only here uh, in the studio, but watching live on things that maybe maybe a half of 1% of the po you know what this does remind me very much of a god thing this higher theological notion that there's a god out there but in order to actually be able to comprehend that there's a god you have to be in the upper half of a half of a percent of the population and be sufficiently educated in these particular fields and be in the right place at the right time bite me i don't i can't you know Maybe I'm a dullard. Uh, I'm perfectly willing to accept that. Uh, I'm not a physicist. I'm not a quantum physicist. I'm not an astrophysicist. Uh, I do know a few of them. There's one sitting in the room whose eyes looks like they've glazed over as well. Uh, and he's nodding. So, you know, call a physics show. And make your case to the people who understand it. And when you get the Nobel Prize for demonstrating that reality is fictional, then you can come back and say that reality is fictional. And I'll say, great, what frickin' difference does that make to me? You might as well have demonstrated to me that free will is an illusion. Great. I, it doesn't make any difference to me unless you demonstrate that there's some way out of this, like I'm trapped in the matrix. And, and now you've, you've got my solution. Otherwise, you're just wasting time. Whoa. What? I know Kung Fu. Wow. <laughs> I quit. Because <laughs> Russell will beat me up. <laughs> Tom in Sacramento, if you mention physics, I'm hanging up. How are you? <laughs> if you like this video, subscribe. And don't forget to check out my novel, Alaris, The Lances of Light, on Amazon Kindle in the description below.